I do collect these books here. New York Review of Books Poets. Mass market paperback size, but they're bound really sturdy, almost almost too sturdy sometimes. The covers are really pretty because they're really simple. The poets that they tend to publish are ones that poets I already like, already like. It's just hard to pick up one of these where the poems in it aren't good in some way. I've really liked them so far. So I just want to like go through them one by one. These are loosely in ascending order of ones I know least to ones I know most and have read most and sort of like most. But so this one's Raul Zorita, um, INRI, INRI. But super cool, like one of the prettiest colored ones. Uh, regrettably haven't read this yet, but um, I've read a bit of Vita Nuova in a different translation. Um, I read a bit of that like five years ago. Um, and I know that this is going to be really good and juicy. Um, and it's like in, you know, it's got the prose and the poems. Gosh, this is going to be great. Kind of Christmas colors on that one. Um, J.H. Prynne, The White Stones. He is a favorite and uh, an object of scholarship for many poets that I like watch YouTube videos of. Prominent poets respect J.H. Prynne and similarly another UK poet, I think. Um, I've heard them mentioned in the same breath sometimes. Um, Denise Riley, Say Something Back, and And Time Lived Without Its Flow. Super cool, I just started reading poems from this. There's one in it that's printed like uh, sideways. It was this one, Never to Disinter the Pink Companion. I thought that one was pretty great. Michael Heller, Telescope. Uh, it's like poems from a really long span of time. It's really thick. I felt uh, uh, slightly underwhelmed by it when I first got it, I think because I was comparing it to like W.S. Graham or something, and um, it, this seemed somewhat uh, like derivative of it or not as um, intense as that other one. But now I, I like this book a lot, and I, I would recommend adding it to your collection if you happen to collect these books or tend to like these kinds of poets. Um, Pierre Reverdy, I mean, that's really good. All, all the poets you like translated this guy because they all love him. Margaret Cavendish, um, edited by um, one of my favorite poets today. And this one's great and funny and, and just so imaginative and will make you, will make you write, like, the re really inspiring. Joan Murray, I, I read this one more, like, I, back when there were coffee shops, I took this one to coffee shops and people expressed that they really like it. And, um, uh, I, has, I was in a huge John Ashbery phase, sort of still am, and it was cool to see how this book, um, both the poem book that she published while she was alive, and then also the fragments in the back, and then like the, some of the personality in the letters, was like a, a, a very brave precedent to you know, poets, Ashbery-esque poets that I like today, um, with certain reservations. And also I think the purple on this cover is just one of the best colors of these that I've found so far. I don't know, it just seems really like rich and poetic and sort of like her because she's like dark and serious and austere, as I always like to say, but um, but really like funny and and uh, and putting fun like putting things together, you know, juxtaposing in a way that feels more uh, playful. And then we have Sakutaro Hagiwara, Cat Town is a big prose poem in the back that I recommend reading. And then the rest of the book is just very quotable. Um, very uh, rewardingly melancholy, just, it's got this bright yellow dandelion color, but it's got the, these contents that are somewhat despondent. Oh gosh, really despondent, but also really observant, and um, nothing like this book, highly recommend it. W.S. Graham, um, this one, like, all my friends love W.S. Graham, and Michael Robbins, who edited the, who edited the, edited the uh, Margaret Cavendish one, like reviewed this one highly, and then I think other professors at college really loved this poet, and I also love this book. I I viewed it as a uh, kind of an offshoot of the Gerard Manley Hopkins that I loved, 
that's how I started to really enjoy it. And I still really enjoy this book. And then if I'm ever just going to go outside and like might read a poem somewhere or something, I just take this with me. And then Miguel Hernandez, um, this like selected and translated by Don Cher. This is a really amazing book because it's, it, it grieves very, um, very profusely and it, it's, 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 it's full of grieving and, and um, sadder emotion but it really escapes those emotions and is very cathartic to read and feels very um, heroic and inspiring to read. Um, the poems are, are short and quotable and memorable and cutting, and they will really, um, they inspire you to, to try to put voice to some of the harder things that you're going through, I, I, I think. Some of the harder and vaguer oppressions that you uh, come across in your daily life. So that, and, and I've read it a couple of times on account of it's so thin and the translation is so readable. And I got it, it was one of the first ones of this kind of book that I collected. Um, so yeah, so these are all quite great. I really recommend that you pick one up if you like poetry at all, if you write poetry and, and um, just enjoy them. Just if you if you if you know of any others of these that you really really like, um, and and would recommend that I get like what about that one the magnetic fields, you know or, or or if there are any others that you really like from this collection please let me know, and um, please enjoy reading and writing poetry today and I hope this video has been fun and enlightening for you.